The Civil War was fought between 1861 and 1865, between the Northern Union and the Southern Confederates, over the idea of abolishing slavery. Many died for their beliefs, and in April of 1865, the North defeated the South, emancipating the slaves and stopping the South from splitting into a separate nation. The war was very bloody, and many soldiers were injured and sent home with an honorable discharge, one of whom was Benjamin F. Stevenson. The Grand Army of the Republic was first an idea from Stevenson to keep Civil War veterans in close contact with one another. In 1866, when it was first established, veterans would meet in any place they could just to keep contact. But the first actual building just for them wasn't built until 1898 in Detroit, Michigan, far from the GAR's home of Decatur, Illinois. Stevenson never expected for there to be such an enormous amount of members spread out across the United States. Uh, well, the Grand Army of the Republic was a place for, for the veterans uh, to meet after the American Civil War, which we know was 1861-1865. And when they came, came home, uh, they, they organized the first concept, the first idea of Veterans Day. And uh, so uh, the Civil War veterans uh, established themselves throughout the North, many cities and towns. Uh, this one here in Lynn, Massachusetts was called Post Number 5 in memory of General Frederick W. Landon of the GAR, the Grand Army Republic. So they all got together and um, most of the, the people on the walls here, uh, I don't know if you want to pan that, but most of them um, were from Lynn before and after the Civil War, but some came from other states, and the common thread was that they had a uh, union discharge, but they're not well, honorable union discharge to join this post. If you have fought for the other American side, which we know is uh, the Confederacy, uh, you were not allowed into this building, although you were, you know, you were American. Uh, so most of these uh, gentlemen on the walls were shoe factory workers. Uh, some of them were shoe factory owners. Uh, we have a, a former mayor that belonged to this organization, uh, Roland G. Usher, who was the uh, 11th mayor of Lynn. Um, we also have some members of the 54th Mass, which was uh, Colonel Robert Goose Shaw's regiment, the movie Glory, that we uh, glorified by, by Hollywood. But basically, it was a place where they all could meet, and as a, uh, as a group, they became quite strong, like I wrote. Uh, you know, individual strands in a rope are not, not very strong, but as a group, uh, very strong, uh, politically, uh, economically, uh, and uh, they contributed quite a lot to the cities and towns where they, where they, uh, they live. The saying goes that if you, were, if you lost your job, you don't go home and tell your family. You come over here and tell these members, and you get your job back, hopefully. Well, they would try to get you, your, your job back. So it's, uh, so that, that's basically, uh, a summary of, of the end. Today there are only three active posts remaining throughout the country. One is in Illinois and another is in Pennsylvania, but neither compare to the one in Massachusetts. Landra's Post 5, today located at 58 Andrew Street, Lynn, Massachusetts, was very important to the growth of its surrounding community. This post was built in 1885 and held strong power within the city. Its leaders helped many of its members to get jobs in the shoemaking industry, the prime field at the time. The shoe industry later declined, and General Electric Company, also known as GE, became the main supplier of jobs and gave the museum the first dynamo, or generator, to use in their building. They would meet in a large meeting room to discuss topics, discerning things going on within the city, as well as within the GAR itself. They would discuss how to solve certain problems in Lynn, or vote on which member would be elected to move up in stature, using the Masonic system of blackballing. The GAR's power helped it to put officials, usually members of the organization itself, or related to its cause, into office for the city. This allowed them to have even more influence. The GAR building in Lynn is still used as a meeting place, but now the sons and daughters of the Union veterans meet here. It is also a museum filled with artifacts from the Civil War. Robert Mathias is the curator at the museum and is in charge 
with the upkeep and tours. Thanks to him, people can learn about the struggles that took place so that it could be truly recognized that all men are created equal. The treasures that have been acquired from this world-changing war are displayed here to honor those who fought in it and to teach those who followed. Every item is a window, each shedding its light into the past, which helped shape the country into what it is today. These items are among a variety of objects ranging from clothing to weapons to journals and books, each captured in time and preserved as well as possible to ensure that it was as accurate and precise as possible. These all help people to grasp what was used during these times and what was going on during as well as what this organization did after the war. The leadership and valor of the members of the GAR helped push the community to new heights and prosperity. Music